Agile development is referred to as people-driven instead of being process-driven or plan-driven. In Agile development methods, the aspects of a project are managed by people and collaboration instead of by plans and rigorous processes. These project aspects include scope, requirements, risk management, change management, and testing. The scope identifies the boundaries of a project. It describes the high-level vision, the deliverables, the expectations, and also what is out of scope. When using Agile, all team members should be aware of the scope and in agreement. All team members need to have the skills to be experts in the business domain. Unlike in classic process models where, for example, the business analyst might be expected to be the domain expert. As you probably all know, requirements are the detailed scenarios of what the software should do from the user or customer perspective. In a non-agile process-driven project, requirements gathering can be a very time-consuming process involving analysts and user interface experts engaged in lengthy meetings with business stakeholders. For example, in a more process-driven approach, a business analyst will often prepare a highly detailed requirements document, while the user interface expert creates pixel-perfect UI wireframes, which are then followed by complex design and architectural documents created by the development team all of which go through formal approval processes before starting to code. It can take weeks or even months before serious development begins. Gathering requirements on an agile project should typically not involve a long time-consuming series of processes and documentation. The developer should have face-to-face -face meetings with the product stakeholders and document only what is necessary to get working code back to the business stakeholder or customer by breaking the work into small iterations, possibly as small as one week. For instance, in a project with many user screens and reports, an iteration might be the delivery of one single report. Using Agile, a developer sitting with the business stakeholders can sketch out use cases and activity diagrams, along with notes of the work needing to be done. Once an understanding is reached, with just a few sketches, coding could begin. Risks are the conditions that jeopardize the goals of a project. Risks can be identified by how likely they are to occur and what the impact would be if they do occur. For example, requirements could be incomplete or incorrect, poor decisions could be made, there could be a lack of adequate staffing, a lack of business domain knowledge, the team could be using unfamiliar or unproven technologies. In agile methodologies, by having frequent short iterations, close communication between team members, and technical excellence, you can mitigate risk in an agile project. Team members stay continually aware of the risks and can make quick adjustments using expert judgment. In non-agile development, Change management can be a very rigorous and costly process and can be initiated by anyone on the team who notices that something is missing or incorrectly specified. The change may need to go to a committee to determine if it's an appropriate fit with the scope and project goals. Then the change may need to be estimated to show the potential changes to the budget and schedule. And after that estimation and scheduling, another approval might be necessary since it may be determined to be cost prohibitive to make the change. After all this has occurred, the requirements and scope documents will need to be updated, the design documents changed, and tests and code rewritten. For these reasons, change can be seen as the enemy to progress in plan-driven projects that have very rigorous processes and deep documentation methodologies because they quite often add to the scope of the project. Also, management might have a hard time accepting a change to the final delivery date, so the development team may be asked to absorb the additional work and still deliver on the original date. This can negatively affect team morale in process-driven projects. In a moment, we will discuss how changes are managed in an agile environment. Quality is how well the software does what it is ex expected to do and how free of defects or bugs it is. 
And there should be traceability from your scope, through your requirements and your design, through development and testing. We'll talk about how Agile deals with quality later on. Agile can be contrasted against a process like the waterfall model. Waterfall expects a linear route through development, while Agile encourages and expects iterations. The waterfall does very little to mitigate risk, since until testing occurs, it's very difficult to say whether or not the software does what is expected and that it's bug-free. See our video on waterfall for appropriate uses of the waterfall lifecycle. Agile teams work closely together. In the best case scenario, they can work face to face and side by side, and the customer can directly communicate the changes to the developers. A high level of trust is necessary. Customers need to trust developers to make the proper changes in the way they describe. Developers need to trust customers and product stakeholders to describe changes accurately and to agree to proper timeframes for iterations. So, as far as change is concerned in Agile development, the product stakeholder or customer might work directly with the developers to explain the change, and the developers will then go about making the change to the software. The developers need to have cross-functional skills, such as the skills of a business analyst or a tester. The idea is to quickly get working software with the changes back in front of the customer. Iterations are key to Agile development. As changes are made to the software, they are quickly circled back to the customers and the users for acceptance. While Agile is expected to be iterative, this does not mean that all iterative methods are Agile. Some iterative software development models are very process intensive, such as the unified process, or also NPD. They can also involve very thorough toll gate and documentation steps. Highly skilled teams are able to manage agile development more effectively due to many reasons. The reasons range from the ability to code more quickly to producing fewer defects, for larger projects with more junior developers and communication barriers that can be a result of organizational makeup or geography, a more process-driven approach might be necessary. Such processes might mean including formal toll gates or milestones, more elaborate documentation, and a more formal sign-off process by stakeholders. A common methodology used by Agile teams is called Scrum. Scrum is suited for small teams since it is based on the idea of designing short iterations called sprints and involves daily meetings with the entire team during which progress is tracked, as opposed to dragging out for long durations without checking progress. Frequent progress checks allow the team to make corrections quickly and get assistance to anyone who is experiencing obstacles. It keeps the team in sync and focused on doing the immediate tasks and facilitates collaboration among all team members. Testing in Agile is also a team effort. The developer works with the testing team to iteratively build test cases and automated tests. Other techniques include building unit tests and following test-driven development methods, TDD. TDD involves writing tests first, based on the principle that if it can't be tested, it should not be coded. In TDD, all tests will initially fail since the code is not yet built. I hope this video has helped you to determine whether the Agile process is appropriate for your team or your project. Please remember to subscribe.